I played God of War for the first time, and I'm here to share my thoughts with you on the 2018 game to see if you should consider giving this one a shot or not. Of course, no major story spoilers will be shown. Let's go. God of War is telling a new part of Kratos' story, long, long after him leaving Sparta. So if you're like me, where you didn't get a chance to play the original games, and we're kind of going in blind, it's gonna be alright, as it proves to be an easy to follow plot. Kratos' wife has died, leaving him and his son Atreus to fulfill her dying wishes, to spread her ashes at the highest peak in all the realms. Of course, there will be enemies trying to stop you along your journey. It's a story of fatherhood and redemption, but you will learn of Kratos' past along the way. The story has heart. For someone who hasn't played the previous games, I found this to be well done. The writers did a great job of revealing past details of Kratos' old life, while not having it overtake the new direction they have him going in this game. Obviously, I won't go into deep explanations here, but it is a great story that does have surprising revelations throughout. The cast ensemble for this one was great. Christopher Judge's voice for Kratos embodies the character so well, that deep smoky voice, it almost sounds like the dude was born to do whiskey commercials. Sonny Soljic did great for Atreus. The supporting cast well rounded out the group too, with characters like two dwarven brothers, a witch, and a talking head. Yes, you heard that correctly, but I'll let you figure out how he fits in the story on your playthrough. The story will be broken up into journey chapters with a grand total of 16. The game takes place within North Mythology, starting you in Midgard, but as you adventure deeper into the story, you will be able to travel onto other realms. This was a very cool concept, on how each of the realms differentiate from one another, how they look to the enemies you will face. The style Santa Monica Studio went for traversing this world is fantastic. They gave the player a balance for taking on the game. You can either stick to playing the narrative, going the classic linear story approach by going from mission to mission, or you can take your time, wander around, find collectibles, take on side missions, and discover the cool things hidden out there. It's honestly a great setup as it's not designed to be a massive open world, but it's broken up respectably into these smaller zones. It's kind of hard to describe it past that until you get into the actual game to see it for yourself. I wouldn't mind seeing more games take this approach, as I didn't find myself getting burned out, and it helps keep the story pacing. Once you advance far enough into the story, you will gain access to a fast travel system with these mystical doors. I kind of wish it was given to you slightly earlier though. Like I mentioned about those 16 journey chapters making up the story, you won't fully unlock fast traveling until after beating that ninth mission. You can live without it as boat travel helps, but fast traveling is great. It would be nice to have that option available a little sooner. I will give you a heads up too. You can only fast travel to those other mystic doors that you've discovered. These will automatically be added to your map once you discover it. Each region typically has at least one of those doors, which is a plus. My only true complaint, however, is out of all the realms they show you, you sadly can't visit them all. I feel like they did this partially for the next game, maybe for continuity purposes, but it does feel like a tease. Better luck next time, pal. God of War has a fun combat system. It's a bit of a learning curve in the beginning. Thankfully, not too steep of one. You will get a battle axe with abilities. One in particular that is so satisfying is how when you throw it, you can hit a button for it to return like the ultimate boomerang you'll get a shield to pair with it. Then, when it comes to Atreus, yeah, can't forget about the little dude. He'll provide some archery skills to tag team enemies with you, like a buddy system. As you play the game earning XP, you'll be able to develop what you can do in combat by investing your XP points accrued in the skills section. For your axe, you can unlock skills helping with that ranged throw and close quarter combat. Then, for your shield too, being able to break enemies' stances and batter them. Lastly, my favorite for Kratos was leveling up his Spartan Rage, where he goes Super Saiyan for a short time. Atreus will have it where you can evolve his speed at which he can shoot his bow, 
and the damage output he does with it. He has a few other cool elemental things as well that he can do. That axe you got, uh, it was me what made her. In addition to leveling up skills with XP, you will collect credits and resources along your playthrough, which will come in handy when leveling up your weaponry and armor. The armor is broken down into three areas, chest, wrist, and waist. There is tier levels to how good gear is, shown by what color it is. Here is the key to that. This is where you'll want to visit either the dwarves. They'll be able to craft things for you, whether it's new gear or apply those upgrades to already existing gear. When doing so, you may want to keep an eye on the stats you'll see on the right side of your screen. It will show how upgrades will affect those and the strengths of what those items will do for you. There are a total of six categories. Strength, Runic, Defense, Vitality, Luck, and Cooldown. In my playthrough, I tended to prioritize Strength and Defense, but as the game got harder later on and those enemies did too, I started investing more in Vitality and Cooldown as well. I really enjoyed my time throughout this game. I didn't really find any moments to be a dull one. I put about 25 hours into this, but it will only take you a little over 20, I think, if you solely focus on the story. For my completionists and trophy hunters out there looking to 100% it, it's said to take upwards of 50 hours. Honestly, I felt like I got my money's worth with this one. I managed to pick it up on sale for $30. It's one of the best looking story games I've played in quite some time. I was playing it on my PC with what they labeled original graphics, but for those who have elite, humongous builds, it can manage to go up to 4K quality, which from seeing some of the gameplay at that level, it's gorgeous. So beautiful. I've heard that God of War Ragnarok will be making its way to PC sometime in 2024. After my pleasant experience with this one, and now seeing why it's such a respected game, I may have to give Ragnarok a shot when it comes to Steam in the near future. But for now, that's going to be a wrap on God of War 2018. If you've played God of War before, let me know. How was your experience? If not, would you consider playing it? Please drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already, as I'd love to have you join this growing community. And let me know your takes in the comments section. But most important, remember to take care of yourself, have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next video.